Hello everybody, Gregor Arturo here in uh, the lovely rainforest of the uh, Blue Ridge Mountains, Pisgah National Forest, just outside of Asheville. And so here's a big beautiful tree, take a look at that, wow, it's covered with uh, ivy, um, the non-poisonous non kind. And uh, so I want to talk about trees today, being um, next to this lovely beautiful one right here and how they how they uh, dance with our reality, how they work. So, trees interact with light, electricity, and magnetism, but most people are just familiar with how it interacts with light in photosynthesis, which I'm not going to go into because that is more common knowledge. And I'm going to talk about magnetism and electricity. So the first notion is with electricity. And uh, these trees um, are reaching toward the sky. There's a reason they're reaching toward the sky. And uh, I'm going to make some connections also with Nikola Tesla and his towers and how uh, you can tie that all together with biomimicry. And so when, let's say the, uh, the, the earth, the ground, okay, um, Mother Earth, is, is slightly negative, if not neutral. But let's just say it's slightly negative. And there's points on the planets where it could even be positive, but we'll say it's slightly negative. And the ionosphere, way up above us, um, is uh, positively charged. And it's positively charged because it's consisting of ionized hydrogen, which means hydrogen without the electrons, so it's just a proton. And the solar winds, which are coming from the sun constantly, 24-7, are also ionized hydrogen. That is constantly recharging and making the ionosphere more and more positively charged. So right now we have a differential between the ionosphere and the ground. There's an electric field between the two. Um, one thing also to, to think about is the ionosphere is uh, positively charged, expansive charge, and the ground, slightly negative, is a compressed form of charge. You also have, in terms of just mass, density difference. So you have a flow of energy in terms of the density difference of the material. All right. However, we have something called lightning strikes. Whenever there's a lightning strike on the planet, which are happening all the time, anywhere from 100,000 to 500,000 hertz, you get a discharge of the ground, which means electrons go up to the ionosphere. Um, and it creates this electric field, pulsates, up and down, up and down, up and down. So guess what these guys do? These guys tap into that pulsation um, and uh, it allows it to have an oscillating electric field within it, um, which is in symbiosis a oscillating electromagnetic field because um, electric and magnetic are just different perspectives of the same thing. So when you create the oscillating electric field, it also creates an oscillating magnetic field. And so the next thing to talk about is magnetism. And trees, which are hydrocarbons and mostly water, they uh, they're diamagnetic, which means they are uh, their magnetic field uh, is perpendicular to an external magnetic field. Or you could say their internal flow is perpendicular to an external flow of energy. And so the magnetic field is running from here zoom, to there. That, that's north. And so the energy is coming from the equator, where it's very expansive, and it's getting pulled toward the poles where it's very cold. So you can just think from hot to cold, the energy is moving that way. Um, it also has to do with torque. And uh, so the energy is moving through this property. And um, the thing to understand when we have an oscillating flow of energy, an oscillating internal flow of energy. So let's say, for example, I hold my breath. <gasps> okay? And while I'm holding my breath, I'm not getting this oscillating flow of energy through my body. And so the Earth's magnetic field can permeate my hand. It pretty much permeates my whole hand. It'll just go right through it. Um, but, because uh, diamagnetism is perpendicular, it repels a magnetic field out of its being. The more, the stronger the oscillating flow is within a, a substance, such as me or a tree, um, the, uh, the more it, you can assert your own chi, your own magnetic field, your own force field, and you're pushing that energy outside of you. So let's say I'm doing deep rhythmic breaths, tantric breaths. 
<sighs> and I'm getting this really deep uh, cyclical flow going on within me, then I'm going to start to increase my own ma magnetic field, my own chi, my own prana, to where um, the, the magnetic field is going to have to come and, and go around my hand. It's getting pushed around it. It's cur it curves around it. It'll still pierce my hand, you can see to some extent, depending on how strong that oscillation is, but it's going to curve around it. So, now we'll think about trees. Now, with trees, they're also designed in a, in a tubular fashion with these concentric layers. So, also, the geometry of the tree helps assist, push out the magnetic field around it. And the Earth's magnetic field then curves around this tree. So, now, we're in a forest. Now, think of every tree is oscillating to the Earth's electric field and thus allowing the magnetic field to curve around the trees. It's basically the same thing as if I walk over to a river and I look at the river and I see all the water curving around the rocks and it starts to create all these little vortexes. The same thing is happening with a forest and the Earth's magnetic field. And uh, if you can see all the prana flowing in, the, in this forest, you just see this fractal vibration of, of life. Um, and the thing to then understand on a, on a bigger level is each one of these trees, this is a big notion of diamagnetism, is basically a gear to the Earth's magnetic flow. It dances with the Earth's magnetic flow. And so every tree we grow enhances the Earth's magnetic f field. Every tree we cut down decreases the Earth's magnetic field. Every time you sit down and meditate and align your chakras perpendicular to the Earth's magnetic flow, and you do deep rhythmic breathing, you're helping the flow of the Earth. You're, you're, you're adding to it. And so, we're all a part of this. We're all connected. Um, we're all dancing together. We're all gear cogs in this beautiful dance. So, I hope that put some insight into people and also share how you can use technology and biomimicry to replicate this process um, to generate power, to help support the ley line system in Gaia and uh, several other little purposes. But uh, thank you for listening and enjoy your day. Namaste.